In the earlier recordings, we have introduced the concept of a specific pack test model. We've said that there, there is a cloth sector and there is a food sector. In the food and labor is used in both the sectors. So LC amount of labor is used in the cloth sector. LF amount of labor is used in the food sector. But in the food sector, land is a specific factor. In the cloth sector, capital is a specific factor. Right? We have talked about these things in the earlier recordings. Now, how, how do we determine wages of the labor? How do we determine how much labor is going to be allocated between the two sectors in an economy? So all of this is happening before the trade has happened. Right? So there is a cloth sector and there is a food sector. Right? In the cloth sector, there are profit maximizing firms. In the food sector, there are profit maximizing firms. So in the cloth sector, these profit maximizing firms would be employing up to the point till the wages in the cloth sector are equal to the value of the marginal product of labor in the cloth sector. So whatever labor is being employed in the cloth sector, uh, what they are saying is that uh, profit maximizing employers would be giving wages up to the point. It is equal to the value of the marginal product of labor in the cloth sector. The marginal product of labor in the cloth sector is MPLC. Price of cloth is PC. So PC into MPLC is nothing but the value of marginal product. So this is nothing but the value of marginal product of labor in the cloth sector. Similarly, in the food sector, food sector firms are going to employ up to the point till wages in the food sector, wages for labor in the food sector is equal to the value of marginal product in the food sector of labor. So marginal product of labor in the food sector into the price of food. So these uh, employers in the food sector will be employing up to this particular point. And this is nothing but equal to VMP LF. So nothing but equal to VMP LF, right? Now, the other thing to understand is that as far as MPLC is concerned, now MPLC per se is diminishing. So we have said that MPL is positive. But the increase in MPL as you keep on increasing the amount of the labor, that is diminishing. Similarly, MPLF is also diminishing. Right. Also, VMPLC is nothing but the demand curve. For labor hmm? in the cloth sector, VMP LF is demand curve for labor in the food sector. Now, VMP LC is made up of the product of PC into MPLC. Now, MPLC is diminishing, PC is given to you. So, this is constant. So, demand curve for labor per se. It is because MPLC is diminishing. So demand curve for labor in the cloth sector is downward sloping. Hmm? Demand curve for labor in the food sector is downward sloping. Mm -hmm. That is down. Also, we have said this that the labor in the two sectors that is perfectly mobile. 
that is perfectly mobile. between the sectors. So when do you think that this mobility of labor is going to stop? This mobility of labor is going to stop when the wages in the cloth sector is equal to the wages in the food sector. Because if wages in the food sector is let's say more than the wages in the cloth sector, then, the, then uh, labor is going to go towards the food sector because it is getting the higher returns there. Uh, so, but uh, in case of the wages are going to be equal, then it doesn't matter. Why? Right? Because then both, uh, I mean, the labor is going to be indifferent between working in the food sector or working in the cloth sector. Okay. Fair enough. Equilibrium wage rate. Achha, other thing is, we should also understand that the total amount of labor in the cloth sector plus total amount of cloth, sorry, total amount of labor in the food sector is equal to the total labor account. This is also there. Fair enough. We have also said this that WC is equal to WF. So that would mean and WC is equal to PC into MPLC. WF is equal to PF into MPLF. Huh? So I can write PC by PF is equal to MPLF upon MPLC. Uh, MPLF upon MPLC. So what is your PC by PF. Let me write this. Okay, I'll write it here only. So, what is PC by PS? PF? Your relative price of cloth. What is the uh, MPLF upon uh, MPLC? That is the slope of PPF. slope of PPF, right? Uh, and this is also called the slope of the ISO value line. Slope of ISO value line. So at the point at which the production is going to take place at that particular point, the slope of the ISO value line should be equal to the slope of the uh, PPA. Should be equal to the slope of the PPA, right? So what, we, what do we mean by this is in terms of a diagram, Well, we have, uh, okay, I can also draw it like this. Okay. On this axis, you have MPL uh, in W. So this is basically your, your uh, MPLC and WC types. Here on this axis, I have MPLF and WF. Fair enough. On this axis, I have QF, let's say. And on this axis, I have QC. Mm -hmm. On this axis, I have QC. Fair enough. Well, what I know is that uh, the VMPL curve for this guy, cloth sector, it is downward sloping, we have just said. Also, the 
BMPL curve for the food sector is also downward sloping. So just imagine it from that side. Imagine it from this side, right? Okay. So, and they are intersecting, let's say here. They are intersecting out here. And one more thing I want to tell. Here, you have LC, which is increasing in this direction. Here you have LF, which is increasing in this direction. So it's like, instead of drawing the curve like this, we have made the axis like this. It doesn't matter anything else. Right? It's just the way, how do you draw this anyways? And what is this telling me? This particular point? the amount of the labor which is going to be employed is, let's say, LC1 upon LF1. And the production is going to take place at this point. And uh, the wages are going to be like this. This is WC. This is WF. So you're going to employ till Wages are equal to the value of the marginal product in the in the cloth sector. Wages are equal to the value of the marginal product in the food sector. Fair enough. So I have, and this LC1 and, L, and LF1, once it goes into their respective production functions, so you have, uh, say for example, uh, in QC, that is the function of LC and K. So K is given to you. And when LC1 goes into QC, it gives you QC1, right? When LC1 goes into QC, it gives you QC1. So let me just call this as QC1. Similarly, you have QF out here. Land is given to you. When LF1 goes into the production function, it gives you QF1. Hmm? So this is also that production point on the production possibility front. Uh, and this is the way you draw the ISO value line. This is the way you draw the ISO value line. So the slope of this ISO value line is uh, minus PC by PF. So we generally write in the absolute term, this is minus PC by PF. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing. Other, other could be what? We can also see very quickly what is the impact impact of equiproportional change of equiproportional change in prices. So what is going to be, how, how, will, you, how will you show the impact of equiproportional change in prices means, let's say prices have increased by 10%, right? Prices have increased by 10% for both uh, the cloth sector and the, and this sector, your, uh, what do you call it? Food sector. So when prices have increased for the food sector, then what happens? It is going to shift up like this. Oh, oh. Something like this. And uh, when the prices have shipped up in the cloth sector also 10%, then VMPL curve is also going to shift up here. So the only thing which will happen is that the wage rates are going to increase. That is the only thing which is going to happen. Uh, 
that is the only thing which is going to happen. It might increase to WC dash, WF dash, right? So the allocation of labor between the sectors, that is going to remain same. The output of the two goods, that is not going to change. There are no real changes. Real wages are unaffected because wages have also increased by the same amount as the increase in the price. So guys, you can see this. How much wages have increased this much? And what is the increase in price that also, this, this, is, this is a parallel shift. Na? So the amount of increase in the wages and amount of increase in the price is the same. So there is no change in the real wages, right? Real wages. There is no change in the real wages as such. Uh, so everyone is, is in exactly the same position as before. This is the case for impact of equiproportional change in prices. Tomorrow, we're going to look at when there is a change in the relative prices. And uh, we're also going to look at uh, how the change in the relative prices is going to impact the distribution of income in the economy. Right. So one more thing in this case, when you have the same amount of labor which is being employed right, in the each sector. So here also, since the production is going to take place even let's say at point two, whatever, but the but the allocation of labor is still same. So allocation of labor is same uh, in both the sectors. Real wages are same. So basically, there is no change in the income distribution as such. Uh, uh, so labor is going to get the same amount of uh, what do you call? Even if the prices have increased in the same proportion. Here in this case is the real wages are not changing. Labor is going to get the same uh, same uh, amount real wages. And uh, there is no change in the distribution of income in the economy in this case. Tomorrow we'll look at the case when there is the change in the relative prices. So one of the, uh, let's say one of the goods price has increased and the other ones has not changed. Then how is this going to affect? And how will that affect the income distribution in the economy? That's what we're going to look at tomorrow, right? Okay, beta.